Good afternoon, everyone out in YouTube world, internet land. This is Kirsten Hall again, co-publisher with Fox Point Publishing. And this afternoon, we are talking to Amy Gregg. She is one of our authors who is coming on, well, she's already on with us. And matter of fact, doesn't your beta reading start, your initial beta reading start soon? In a week. In a week, yes. In because week. I know our editor gets her book, I think the end of June. And then, yeah, a, a few months of editing and her book, although we say it's going to be out more like December, we are really trying to bust our butts and get that actually out prior to Thanksgiving. This is a surprise to Amy. I was going over, <laughs> surprise, I was going over um, our uh, projected workload. And so we're going to try our best to get that out uh, a little before Thanksgiving in time for the holidays and all that good stuff. But she has to get the beta reading done and editing. <laughs> so there we go. That's what we know. Sometime towards the end of 2020. But anyway, I'm skipping ahead here. Um, yeah, we are doing introduction interviews and surprises with our authors online on on camera as you can tell it's a new it's a new feature of our introduction interviews but anyway um all right so yeah we're going to talk with amy greg today she's got a couple of questions here in our scripted reality show and so off we go all right amy when did you first start writing i first started writing in grade school was really when i first started writing and um, my friend and i we wrote I guess what would be called like fan fiction or was used to be fan fiction. Um, we loved X-Men a lot. And so we wrote our own version of it and we would handwrite it in notebooks back in the day because we didn't have computers back then, dating myself here. And so we would write it back and forth, back and forth. I would write a scene with my characters and I would give it to her and she would write a scene with her stuff. And we filled 10, notebooks with that throughout sixth and seventh grade okay well very cool now you still have the notebooks i do we do uh the grand scheme was to type them out and to save them because they're getting you know a little old they're about 20 some odd years old um still have yet to actually get around to typing them all out because it's a lot it is it's a lot of work and now, have you noticed that when you're used to typing now that trying to, could you imagine going back and doing all that writing? I, I do. Um, I kind of go back and forth. Even now I do handwriting and okay. notebooks. And then I go back and uh, my current book right now, I'm, most of it is in, in a notebook. And then I go and type it out. Okay. That, that that's right. I've okay. I've seen your notebook. See, I've gotten so used to typing <laughs> that when I write like two sentences, my arms like ow, ow, ow. I mean, you know, you just don't use those muscles anymore. So anyway, um, all right. And I'm a big wimp. There you go. <laughs> we've we've told everyone in YouTube world. Never mind. Okay. Uh, what's the story behind your latest book? The story behind my latest book is, um, well, it's very rooted in reality, really. It's, it's this weird amalgamation of uh, my personal life, my, um, where the, the book is, it's a, a cozy mystery set in rural Minnesota. And this girl, she was a, a country girl, then ends up through various means going to live in a city in Minneapolis. Then after a few years, gets transplanted back onto the family farm and tries to adjust to that shift in, you know, kind of fish out of water type of thing. And I grew up in about two thirds of my childhood was spent on my grandparents' farm. And then farm got sold, and now you know I turned city girl, as my husband calls me. And then now I am married to a dairy farmer, and kind of transplanted back out into the rural life, and trying to find my niche out here. And so it's, it's almost like a fictionalized version of what happened to me <laughs> in mm -hmm. a really weird way, and uh, with a little more murder, you know. Um, not, so okay. much murder, not so much murder in my life. 
good. <laughs> you know, and just, it's kind of an homage to growing up in the, the farm life and rural life and my grandparents and just how that kind of set the study, the, you know, the, the stones for where I built the rest of my life and went on. So it's kind of a, a love okay. letter to my grandparents. All right. Very cool. What town did your, are your grandparents from? Sleepy Eye. Oh, okay. Right. Um, now, um, what people might not know is besides this cozy mystery series you've got coming up, which will consist of two, three, four books, whatever that may be, yep. you've got three other books out there in the world. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes, I would love to. Um, I was previously published and also self-published. Um, I have three books. One is Through the Woods that I published um, not too long after high school, I wrote it in high school. And Through the Woods is kind of a fantasy horror action adventure uh, story where this girl gets, you know, again, transplanted somewhere else. That's kind of a theme with my story. Um, she ends up in England with her aunt and discovers there's a magical world of creatures living in the woods behind her aunt's mansion. And she ends up, you know, somewhat befriending some of them and some of them she makes enemies and she, you know, has to save the day from these magical creatures. Uh, and so that's Through the Woods. And then another, one of my other books is Magic and Madness. That is a uh, paranormal romance, uh, urban fantasy book that is set in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I kind of like to, to think of it as if you, grew, if you grew up reading Twilight and Harry Potter with the magic and the paranormal werewolves, vampires, you would like um, magic and madness. It's a little more adult, a little more um, kind of a step above those books, kind of a natural progression. Um, again, a girl finds out um, her name is Heather. She needs to uh, kind of figure out why the the magic in the world and the witches and wizards are having issues with their magical powers, and it comes into this big, huge, you know, end of the world type situation. So of course, she has to save the world. Like you do. <laughs> Just part and parcel. Put it on your to-do list of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my third book is kind of a short story. It's called Next Weekend. It's a contemporary romance. Just a little cute little short story about these two people who had known each other for years. And um, due to certain circumstances in each of their lives, they couldn't be together. And what they do to overcome these you know, obstacles in their way to just be together because they're meant to be together. And yeah. Okay. Well, well, very cool. Story. Very cool. Matter of fact, um, all of your covers too, I like mm -hmm. them. Um, that magic and madness one is really pretty. Um, and then the weekend with the calendar. So yeah, if you guys haven't um, seen these books or are curious about them, if you get on to foxpointpublishing.com and of course we have to be difficult so we stuck the e on the end of point as as chelsea puts it we're getting fancy so foxpointpublishing.com click on professionals at the top scroll down you'll see amy i think she's on the right side and she's smiling and she has a coffee cup she's got coffee cups for every occasion at least i'm i'm seeing that way oh well, there you go there that looks like a familiar cup <laughs> I and it, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Collect things and coffee cups is it. Um, but uh, yeah, and if you click on her webpage, you'll see all of her different books. And I think all of them are linked to buy links and stuff. So everything is on there. But okay, the next one, um, other authors you admire, especially contemporary, does any one of them stand out in particular? Um, yes, I have a author that I have adored for years. His name is Jonathan Mayberry. He does more, I like to call it like ultra violent or like really masculine books. <laughs> which is, which is okay then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, you know, paranormal military type stuff where they go fight the things that go bump in the night. Okay. And really masculine, really kind of uh, guys. Mm -hmm. And yet, I love the way that how May, you know, Mary Berry is able to take these really masculine, violent, you know, gory almost stories and make you feel for the characters. And there's this element of uh, 
you know, emotion and caring that by the end of the book, you're like sobbing and you don't really think mm-hmm. you're, you're like this emotionally choked up over these like, you know, military guys fighting zombies. And yet you are, cause there's just that emotion built in. And I would love to talk to Mayberry and figure out how to get to that level. Cause you know, I, I would love to just have people put my book down and be like, I need a moment. So <laughs> You know, <laughs> I'm proclaimed. I'm proclaimed. Exactly, exactly. You're reading these zombie movies and like you know, the zombie book, and this you know para, you know these ultra violent and just masculine, manly, you know m- military guys, and you're just like, I guess everything turns out okay. <laughs> I would just love to figure that out and how to make that work in my you know that um, that level of emotional investment in the characters that mm-hmm. he does and I would love to talk to him and figure that out. Okay. Well that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if if we ever go to a zombie movie and you're just crying, we'll just be like no. <laughs> but we'll know what's going on. Okay. Um if your book or any of your books were made into film, uh who would play the lead in them? Ooh. Um I think I really haven't thought of many for like the other, my previous books. Um, the main one that I've based, uh, I've done like a big Pinterest board for mm-hmm. um, inspiration for the, my cozy mystery. Um, the, my main character, Lily, I have based really off of just kind of look and appearance and mannerisms of Emma Stone. And cause she, she just has that quirky kind of, down home feeling and yet you know she's a superstar or whatever and you feel like you could be a best friends with her and so I, I modeled Lily after Emma Stone so I really think that she would just be perfect to play the lead and she can do the emotion she can do the drama she can do the you know the physical comedy and everything so she's got a range so. okay all right very cool and how about um Lily's love interest is there a main character person you'd want to play in that movie in that, for that role? Yeah, I think um, quasi, like, former love interest they used to date in high school, but now that she's back in town, there's a little, you know, they're frictiony. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, her, I guess, con- her male contemporary, you know, in the story is uh, David. I think I would probably do Stephen Amell. He okay. Played, he played Arrow in the CW series, mm-hmm. and he's you know got that action, got he he you know built, he's handsome, he's got some comedic chops to him, and he's just good to look at. So you know, and that does that it. certainly doesn't hurt. So there you go. No, no it doesn't. <laughs> That's, there, right there, you get the draw on on the box office draw. So there you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, so never mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what book are you reading right now? Uh, right now, I am just finishing up Fool, um, F-O-O-L, Fool, mm-hmm. by Christopher Moore. Why did I space on his name? Uh, Christopher Moore. And it is just a deliciously irreverent take on Shakespeare's King Lear, as told by the court gesture instead of like the typically main characters you would think. Um, and it's the first in a series. There's um, that base that are um, surrounding the this fool character, and it's just very funny. Just and yet there's that emotional connection again, where like you wouldn't think this irreverent book, where it's just totally tasteless in some points, that you're just like, oh, this character. No, I feel <laughs> okay. Now you feel for fools and zombies and. Okay, well, then. I have a range. You, know? you have a range. There's a whole range. I'm not picky. <laughs> I just for them all. Well, that's very nice of you. Um, all right, and now along with the Fool book, there you said it was part of a series. What else is there? Uh, the second book in the series is called The Serpent of Venice instead of The Merchant of Venice. Um, it follows, oh, goodness. I think it's um, like Iago, Othello, that whole story, mm-hmm. um, where somehow Fool gets transplanted there, and he gets in trouble again. And then the third book in the series just came out a couple weeks ago, um, called Shakespeare for Squirrels. 
where I don't know where he got the title from. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, <laughs> the retelling of much of um, a Midsummer Night's Dream. So he's retelling a Midsummer Night's Dream through Fool's point of view again, and I I love that play. That's my favorite Shakespeare play and movie and everything. I love um, a Midsummer Night's Dream, so I'm very excited to see what Christopher Moore does with that. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty funny. Um, the squirrel thing. Um, <laughs> Shakespeare for squirrels. It's like, where did you get that? <laughs> I hope it's explained in the book. <laughs> well, I, I just uh, was graced with the title Master Herder of Squirrels. Um, <laughs> that's really kind of what my last month has been. Um, and getting everyone together and, and where they're supposed to be and everyone caught up to speed and stuff. So yeah, Master Herder of Squirrels. But when I put, uh, when I take a vacation from Master Herder of Squirrels, then I can read about squirrels and Shakespeare and no th that series though sounds really fun so yeah I'll have to check it out <laughs> all right the last question you have here is do you remember the first book you read yes first book I distinctly remember reading there's actually two um one was the little house in the big woods Mm -hmm. by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Um, my mom read that to me when I was little, and then when I was able to read it for myself, I read it in most of the, the series on my own. So that book really just stuck with me as being like the first introduction into reading by my mom. Mm -hmm. And then the second one I remember distinctly was uh, Socks by Beverly Cleary. Oh, yeah. Cleary. Yeah. Cleary. Uh, that story is about a, a, a cat who was loving life and having a great time and then all of a sudden his owners had a baby and then trying to navigate this new normal of having a baby and I was the baby and now there's a baby. Mm -hmm. um, that was really funny. I like that book. I just remember it distinctly. I, I think I've told you before we um, we had a dog when uh, we brought our first baby home and she kind of knew something was up and uh but boy hmm. <laughs> the dynamics of uh the the furry baby to the unfurry baby oh. and <laughs> very familiar anyway um all right so those are all the questions that you had for me for our scripted reality show do you have any other things you would like to tell everyone um no i don't think so not that I can think of. Just, um, yeah, books coming out soon, apparently sooner than I thought it was, so yay. Hey. <laughs> um, again, yeah, beta readers are going to be going out just within the week, um, getting that feedback back in June, and then sending it off to official editing in June, and get this puppy cranked out. So I'm excited. Yay. And if you guys happen to get onto her webpage for all of her other different books, um, she also has her new cover on, which came out a week or two or three ago. It's a cute cover. It really is. You've had so many compliments on it. And from the people that I've heard from, they're very excited. As a matter of fact, um, her cover, if you even just get on foxpointpublishing.com and scroll down the front part of the page, it's on there as well. So. Anyway, it's always fun to get a new cover in because then I get more stuff to add to like, you know, all the social media and the web page and then put onto other people's web pages and it's pretty it's like, yay. And so I'm always the one running around going, Do you have a new book cover? Do you have a new book cover? <laughs> People are like, Oh my gosh, go away. <laughs> anyway, all right. So um thank you again to everyone uh for joining us this afternoon as we talk with Amy Gregg and um about her upcoming books and such. And uh, somewhere on the screen, it says subscribe or um, on our little logo of the little box. It, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're dancing now. Um, uh, please subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of other introduction videos coming up and we've got fun things scheduled for June and July and on. And um, it's gonna be fun. All right, thank you so much for stopping by. Have a good one. Bye.